Hi there everyone and welcome to this presentation on Centec Drill and Drop Probes. My name is Josh Wing and I work for a company called Harvest Moon based in uh, Tasmania, Australia. Um, we've been using Centec Drill and Drop Probes for the past three, four years. Uh, Harvest Moon's a company that grows a range of vegetables um, including onions, carrots, spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, swede and pumpkin. Um, we've used our drill and drop probes in a range of these vegetable crops. Um, this slide's got a picture of me with um, the northwest coast of Tasmania in the background there and I'm standing in a green bean crop um, which was harvested in February of 2022. We're going to focus on the use of Centec drill and drop probes in an onion crop and focus on one graph, one crop only. There's a couple of major events in there and we can highlight how the Centec probe helps us manage some of the uh, aspects of growing the crop that we're we're up against and how it improves on that so again one crop one probe one one graph and a lot of this presentation will be focused on how this is used in Iramax live and we're skipping a lot of the basic stuff based around probe installation and things like that because I'm sure many of the dealers or existing customers probably are across that sort of side of things anyway. Uh, so in this graph we can see full length of um, the onion crop from start to finish. Uh, probe was installed just after seeding at emergence and uninstalled at, at harvest. So we'll go on to the next couple of slides and talk about what's going on in the crop and how the probe helps us manage these things. So this is a quick outlay of how I set up my Euromax probe graphs. Um, we're, we're using a Centec drill and drop 60 centimetre probe. So that's the depth in the soil that we're looking at. The probe's calibrated to a combined soils preset within Euromax, which I find matches up great with our soils that I have. There's a range of soil types you can pick. Uh, that's the one that works for us, matches up our millimetres of irrigation, etc. So uh, it measures in millimetres, which I also like, not in percentage, percentages of field capacity, which means nothing to most people. This actually measures millimetres. So when you irrigate in, you get the millimetres in and that, and that shows up on the graph. Obviously the and it's a big thing that you highlight to people too, millimetres of irrigation isn't 100% equal to millimetres into soil because you've got other factors like evaporation and um, runoff, etc. So you can use this tool to estimate those things as well. Quickly run through the panes that I set up. Top one is a temperature pane set at um, 10 centimetre depth. I find that just takes the bounce out of the temperature on a daily, daily sort of measure. So you, know, you can get more of an easy trend. Uh, next pane down is daily change in millimetres again, so it's mil a, a raised bar is millimetres of water into the soil profile. And then you've got your daily bars of minus as the plant takes the moisture out. Stack graph, also very important for looking at how your moisture <coughs> penetrates your soil, how fast it goes through your profile, make sure you're not losing too much water out through the bottom of your profile like if those bottom lines are flat and then your water's going straight through you can pick that up you can look at your steps on your stack graph to work out where your roots are and things like that bottom pane is accumulated graph totals uh, that again that's in millimeters so we can get an idea of how many the volume of water that's in our soil we can relate it back to irrigation and other things uh, so i've got the accumulated graph in the bottom blue is the saturation point uh, some of you might pick that, that it actually changes for me because I do change the full point because I find over a long crop that's in there for 140 to 160 days, uh, as your soil settles down, you the obviously the ability of that soil to hold moisture changes a little bit 
and you'll actually, the true full point fluctuates only slightly, but I still highlight that in the graph. So blue saturation, yellow's optimum, blue green's optimum, and yellow's right below the refill point. Red is is your stress point. Uh, another factor I, is very important that I use measure is growth stage markers. So they're in black. Um, can't read because we zoomed out so much, but I've just highlighted them with an arrow. So it's important to put your growth stages in there so that you can teach staff and give more people within our company or customers a, an idea of when crops use water at what growth stage. So it's very important training tool and just to keep as a record for yourself for when that crop starts using water and, and actually remembering that growth stage correlates to when it uses water and that that helps you with your schedule and irrigation for following seasons and and for other crops as well other great thing with iramax live is the predictive line function highlighted on the right hand side so it's that dashed line it'll tell you at whatever stage you're at how many hours or days you are away from irrigation and we find that in our soil type that's extremely accurate down to hours it'll be extremely accurate it also the predictive line readjusts according to the history of of that probe in that crop so once that crop's, pro, crop is in a rapid growth stage the predictive line will change accordingly and, and according to weather and things as well so it's a really good function and that's how i set my graphs up and as we go on we'll we'll look at a couple of things that occurred in this crop one being a major weather event and another one being a disease event and we'll look at how we use the Centec probe to improve how we manage that so this next slide cold weather event on november 15 is uh just a quick overview of the weather in Devonport, Tasmania in November, mid-month on the 15th, um, our maximum temperature was 13 degrees. We were experiencing prior to that temperatures up around 18 to 20. So it drastically dropped, weather turned to the southwest. So for us, that means really cold conditions minimums dropped to three degrees and stayed there for quite some time and we did experience snow on some of the higher areas and low level snowfalls too from memory down to probably approximately 200 meters above sea level and then next we'll just look how that influenced our onion crop so i've zoomed in on the Iramax live graph focusing at the start on the November 15th weather event and still capturing like 30 60 days I think it might have been set on so you get an idea of how the how the crop progressed but at the start if you look at the temperature graph at the top the red arrow indicates our change in soil temperature and believe it or not in about two days we lost a huge amount of soil temperature i believe we were just nudging 20 and we dropped down to a minimum of 12 so we almost lost 50 percent of our soil temperature due to this weather event um, and then i'll show you how we readjusted our Centec probe and iramax graphs to try and regain some of that temperature that we'd lost so when your soil is cold obviously irrigating it and keeping it wet just makes it colder so the first thing that i do <clears throat> is is drop my refill points um, drop my stress points because by having the crop wet it's actually creating stress so i don't want irrigation staff or or growers customers to to irrigate their crops so by stretching out the irrigation interval, you can see at the top we we're able to, the red arrow then indicates in the temperature graph at the top that we've gradually got a trend going upwards and regaining that soil temperature by, again, dropping our refill points and spreading our irrigation out. And without this tool, you wouldn't know how far to stretch your irrigation out, but you can look at your subsoil moisture, you know where your roots are, you know where your active roots are by the stepping in the stack graph so you can drop your refill points and have the confidence that your crop's still going to have enough moisture to sustain optimum growth 
and optimum temperature is what we're chasing. In this next slide, we've got a picture of where our probe's actually located. It's under a pivot irrigator in, in an onion crop as described. Following the weather event, our next major event that happened in this crop was a mildew outbreak. Um, it's normally connected to high humidity as you get into summer, but I strongly believe that this has had more of a connection to st crop stress during the last two weeks of November, as this was evident in onion crops across the northwest coast in Tasmania and also reported in out of onion crops in New Zealand at the time um, that also experienced that really cold weather in the tail end of November. And, and these are the things you, you, that you learn when you, you're running this remote sensing technology like Centec probes and the Euromax system is you, you've always got those stress points. I mean, you imagine like losing 50% of your soil temperature, that's going to have some productivity um, variation in your crop and, and that's certainly the case. But again, in the picture, the main reason I took it was that you can strongly see that it's connected to ir irrigation moisture, how we manage that irrigation because the mildew is concentrated underneath the pivot. The other section, which is, look, appears much more healthier, was obviously irrigated with what we call a gun irrigator, so hard hose irrigator. So it had a different sort of irrigation technique, which would have would have been different sorts of leaf moisture too, which would have definitely played a role. So we'll look, see how that looks in our graph. So I've started looking more at crop health in regard to how we run our irrigation since we've had the Centec probes as a tool and it's very interesting, it's highly effective. Uh, not in all cases, but in most. So I'd like to highlight first, the tool I use is the growth stage tool. You'll see an arrow highlighted it. You cannot make it out real clearly on the slide, but on the bottom graph, I insert a growth stage and I name some of those as events. In this case, it was mildew disease. So I've tagged that growth stage and you'll notice what I've done is I've dropped the refill points. I've dropped the stress point right out so that um, it decreases the amount of ir irrigation water that's been applied to the crop. The idea is to maximise temperature, really pump up the growth of that crop, minimise leaf wetness so we don't increase the the case of um, mildew in the crop in regard to onions and by dropping the stress point if you're using thumbnails in your graphs they'll also show your field capacity at a higher higher percentage so again for irrigation managers i want them to look at all the functionality in the Euromax live and i want them to follow the guidelines and, and not irrigate drop that ir irrigation down Unfortunately, in onions, the mildew disease normally comes in at the tail end and you'll see by the stack graph, this is when those onions are really pumping. Like we've got major crop usage down to 30 centimetres in depth. So we pump these onions are bulbing, they're pumping a lot of water out. So you've got to imagine irrigation guys, production guys are looking at this crop. They're seeing disease in their eyes and... Um, they're thinking more more is more when it's not <laughs> and and um but anyway you use these tools get people to put their faith in them and follow the guidelines and um and see what outcomes that originally um come from that so um sometimes they're good sometimes they're not so good so we'll move on to the next slide i'll drop the refill points drop the stress point and we'll we'll see what happens from there So moving on to our next slide, we're going to look at how the mildew affects crop growth and how that's displayed on the Euromax graph through the readings the probe's taking. So obviously the healthier the plant, the more water it's pumping out. So I've labelled there with an arrow on the left, the rapid water usage, even once the crop's been infected with mildew, which is when that photo was taken, uh, which is about mid to late December. So we've still got a, a healthy crop. Doesn't look that healthy on top, but like underneath those roots are active. They're pumping water. We're using water down to 30 centimetres. 
got good steep steps in the graph, so we know that crops using a lot of water in a daily factor, and and the they've run the crop down to the refill point. Um, probably partly my my error too. Maybe I should have dropped that refill point a little bit more. But you'll see as they continued along on the bottom graph, the the irrigation frequency again picked up because again, like the guys are looking at what's happening on top of the crop. And as soon as they hit it with about two sequential irrigations, you'll see that they flatlined it in every sense of the word. Flatlined as in dead. Uh, stack graph lines flat, so the roots uh, are not, not working. The plant's growth's declined to a point where it's actually not any translocating any moisture out of the soil. But without having the probe in the ground this just gives another dimension to members of our team on, on what's going on underneath the ground when they look when when a lot of people are so purely focused on what's happening on top uh, and we had other crops with mildew instances that had these probes in and we were able to prolong the life of the crop and increase productivity by by doing this same practice i just felt this was a better example given that it showed healthy on the left of this pain versus unhealthy on the right with flat lines. You never want to see a flat line in a stacked graph in a crop at, at any time, I don't believe, unless um, there's a serious agronomic reason why you don't want that crop to be receiving moisture. Um, but, but you want to see help stepped graphs, which again reflect healthy plant growth and you can manipulate your refill points to, to make sure that that crop, if it needs to be run dry, you can run it dry. And you can have the confidence that at 30 centimetres or 40 centimetres where you're not digging with your spade every day, you know the moisture's down there for that crop to draw on. These probes are great tools in, in, when you're drawing down a crop. So you just want to utilise that last little bit of moisture that you can't see every day. Uh, not in, again, diversion a little bit from onions, but great in potato crops late when you, when you, potato crops at tuber stage and you just want them to dry it down at the tail end, but you want enough moisture to maximise your weeks of growth. They're just an unbelievable tool. But hopefully this shows uh, how, how they reflect active, healthy growth, how you try and manipulate it to get that crop to, to stay healthy as long as possible. Obviously, mildew is an aggressive disease in onions, so there's other factors at play here as well with um, fungicides and weather conditions, etc. So there's a, there's a lot going on. Um, this is after the cold weather event. You can see not a lot of bounce in our temperature graph. It looks reasonably flat, so we were able to maximise temperature for the crop at the tail end, but we should have been able to anyway because it was December, January is the hottest um, two months of our year season. So that pretty much sort of concludes the follow through on this one crop this with this one probe so just um concluding i'd like to just say probes are a great tool in vegetables uh, at harvest moon we're now using them in nearly every crop we run uh, i know a lot of drill and drop probes are in like long life crops orchards things like that whereas we're we're pushing into really fast growing crops we'll we'll next season we'll be probing spinach which is on a 21 day growth stage so there's a lot of a lot of time installation uninstalling graph set up and the more you do it the faster you get and and just valuable tool so on the slide there we've got them in green beans on the left they're very compact. I mean, I can put these in brassicas and we can inter we interrow those brassicas. They're in the centre. So obviously they're extremely flagged um, for our machinery operators, but we interrow the brock and collies and, and still run a Centec probe in there. It was a bit of a challenge because we had to do that before interrowing because we had to get a feel for what the crop needed to, as soon as it was transplanted out. So all our, bros all our brassicas are transplants. On the far right, there's a probe in processed potatoes there. Again, they're a valuable tool in there. Um, just to clarify that, really at the end of the crop, when, you, when you've grown those tubers, but you, in our heavy clay soils, you don't want them to, to rot or break down, but you want to maximise that top growth 
to get the maximum weeks out of your potato plant, maximum days and uh, and maximise your yield. And just a little clip down in the bottom left hand side there, the iPad hanging over the steering wheel. Uh, one of the things that I like about the Aeromax system too is that you can use it on your phone, you can use it on your iPad, it comes up on your desktop, it's not in an app, it's it's accessible very easily for for just about anyone when we flick new people onto it a couple of seconds and it just comes up on their phone so it's just the accessibility is great i'd also like to do a quick shout out to tundra who helped me put this presentation together and a fellow colleague darren briggs who now works for simplot australia and um he was the f first industry person that probably referred me onto these centec probes and it's been a great journey and i've learned a lot and and still am so um thanks everybody thanks for your time i hope you could take something out of it